Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where it's an absolutely beautiful day today. I would be shooting this video outside if I didn't have more than one camera which I was going to be describing. Uh, it's really nice, uh, very sunny and warm, a few clouds going by. Uh, <clears throat> after this video I'll go out and uh, take a ride on my bicycle around the town and with any luck I'll be able to uh, record this ride and uh, upload it to my other channel. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I have uh, another channel which I recently started where I'm going to be uh, showing, I guess, different parts of uh, Tokyo from the perspective of a bicycle. Uh, for those of you who might like to see this, uh, I'll post a link to my uh, other channel in the description below the video. But in this video, I'm going to be doing a comparison between uh, the three most popular film cameras uh, which uh, Olympus made. Olympus, of course, has made a lot of film cameras over the years, and anything from uh, range finders to SLR cameras to half-frame cameras and, and lots of other stuff, point-and-shoots and things like that. But the ones which you are most likely to see uh, if you go into a used camera shop or a pawn shop or something like that is going to be one of these three cameras. Uh, this is the OM-1, the OM-2, and the OM-10. Now, uh, uh, <clears throat> these cameras were very popular when Olympus released them. Uh, they were a hit right away. Uh, Olympus began selling them like hotcakes as soon as they were released. Uh, the early 70s was kind of a, a, a big time of change in photography, in, in photographic technology and the like, and pretty much all the camera manufacturers at the same time went and jumped on with uh, new models for that time and uh, Olympus was one of the more notable ones. Uh, they kind of went the opposite direction from the other makers at the time when they were developing their new professional cameras. Instead of heavier, rugged, and uh, I guess M60 or even M2 style, I'm talking about the big machine guns here, uh, uh, weapons for uh, photographers, they decided to come out with something lightweight, uh, simple, and precise. And uh, the OM was what they came up with. The interesting thing about the OM series cameras is that in order to get the best possible camera uh, to release to the public, uh, Olympus backed two competing design teams. One team, the team which developed the OM-1, was uh, uh, headed by Mr. Yoshihisa Maitani, who was uh, one of the most famous engineers in Japan at that time. He was the inventor of the original PIN uh, half-frame camera, and then the PIN F, and of course he went on to design the OM series, and then later on the XA point-and-shoot series. Uh, to keep him on his toes and to make sure that he would make the best possible camera, uh, Olympus funded a competing team, which was also coming up with an SLR design. And uh, oddly, uh, they actually decided to market and produce this competing design for a short time. And that happens to be this camera here, the Olympus FTL. And uh, the FTL, when you compare it to the uh, OM-1, you can see it's a larger and heavier camera and very similar to the, the Canon, Pentax, and uh, Minolta cameras of the day. And from a distance, if it didn't say Olympus, you might think it was one of these other cameras. It even looks a little bit like the, uh, the Nikon uh, uh, or Nikon FT series. And uh, it's significantly heavier, significantly louder, and significantly less well made. Uh, <clears throat> to put it bluntly and honestly, the, the Olympus FTL was just a turd, which looked like a camera. And uh, Olympus didn't produce very many of them. They began having issues with them almost immediately. Production was stopped, and these kind of became uh, a piece of history. And though this camera, which I'm holding, uh, appears to be in a remarkably good condition, uh, it, it's, it actually looks quite nice. It doesn't work, and that's kind of the, the same issue which I've had with uh, maybe 9 out of 10 of these cameras which I've come across. They simply don't work. So uh, I don't recommend this camera for anything other than uh, maybe uh, some historical or sentimental uh, 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 value uh, as, as an actual photographic tool. Uh, you're better off carrying a, a pencil and paper. It, it'll work better and, and be more reliable. As for the uh, Olympus uh, OM series, uh, uh, as much as I don't like the FTL, I, I suppose that the fact that it was being worked on inspired Maitani to uh, push the limits and come out with what was an excellent camera. Uh, the OM-1 was designed for shooting professionals and had some of the features which professionals wanted. And the first and foremost of those was a fully mechanical shutter. Uh, back in the early 1970s, the world was a bigger place than it is today, and batteries and such were kind of hard to find in much of the world. 
And in those days when I was a little kid living in the desert southwest in the middle of nowhere in New Mexico, uh, the closest place you could buy camera batteries would be in Gallup. And that was like a hundred mile drive from where we lived. And no one is going to drive that far round trip in order to get batteries. And, you know, of course you have to drive that far to get film or whatever. And there were places in the world where you had to go even further than that. So uh, pros who are working on assignment for, for whatever uh, reason uh, would want a fully mechanical camera. And these did the job. Uh, the Olympus OM was carried everywhere and uh, it, it brought back some really wonderful photographs from the places where it was dispatched. But uh, as the 1970s progressed and uh, film technology improved, especially faster slide films, it became more necessary to make cameras with a more accurate shutter system. And while the mechanical shutter system works quite well and is very reliable, it's not nearly as accurate as a uh, electronic system. And for those of you who have tried to adjust shutters in these uh, cameras to get them spot on, it's quite hard. You can adjust them and get them very uh, accurately set at the higher speeds only to find that they are less accurate at the middle and low speeds and you adjust the low and middle speeds to be accurate and they are less accurate at the high speeds. And the best you can kind of hope for is to get them good at all settings, but you're never going to get them perfect everywhere. Whereas with an electronically controlled uh, shutter, uh, you, you can actually reach perfection when it comes to accurate exposures. And that's what Olympus did when it came out with its OM2 camera. Now, the OM2 was a very big hit uh, for Olympus, and it was especially popular here in Japan. And it was quite popular with wedding and event photographers. And I still come across a lot of old kits still in the old Olympic Olympus boxes and bags which come with uh, one or two uh, OM2 batteries and assortment of uh, lenses and usually some heavy uh, strobes and uh, battery packs. And uh, most of them which I come across uh, are still in perfectly good functioning order today, including this one. Uh, this one arrived in the mail a, a few days ago and uh, uh, I found it to be in excellent working order. Uh, someone was shooting uh, Fuji Presto the last time it was used. And this one was fitted with a really hard to find 50mm f1.4 million plus serial number lens. Uh, I always get people inquiring about these lenses here and they're quite hard to find. Uh, this is actually maybe only the third one which I've, I've ever had, uh, even though I've come across quite a few of the Olympus cameras. Certainly not the rarest lenses. I had the seventh Olympus OM lens made. I paid like $500 for it. It was a 50 mil 55 millimeter M system uh, f1.2 lens, probably the one of the holy grail lenses uh, uh, which Olympus produced. It's probably worth more than the car cost nowadays. I, I sold it for a lot of money and I was quite happy that I got that much, but I'd have been much better off holding onto it and maybe using it to help fund my retirement. But uh, uh, the, this lens uh, was is really special, uh, the most modern of the 50mm f1.4 lenses, and uh, for those of you who are lucky enough to have one, uh, a lot of people really want this lens. Basically, the, the design is exactly the same between the OM2 and the OM1. Uh, everything looks identical, a lot of the parts are interchangeable between the two cameras. Uh, the OM2 added a easier to use exposure compensation system. It added an automatic operating system and as well as a, you know, a, a more sophisticated system for managing the shutter. You could take very accurate exposures with these and if you were shooting the faster slide films where you have to be pretty much spot on when you are making exposures, this was the wonderful tool. And also the OM2 uh, came standard with the ability to, found, to mount uh, motor drives and power winders whereas the OM1, uh, this didn't become a, a standard uh, until later on, and it was an option on early models, and of course you could get them modified to accept uh, the motor drive or power winder, uh, and those are usually have a sticker on the front which will say uh, MD on it, which you know stands for motor drive. Uh, you know, personally, I don't really like the motor drives and power winders. They're heavy and noisy and all that, um, and uh, if I'm going to be shooting photos like that, I would probably just shoot digital rather than shoot film. Uh, film is something that, that you, you have to kind of take your time with, especially when you consider film isn't especially cheap nowadays. Um, uh, it's, it's uh, don't bother with the power winders or motor drives. Uh, Though, uh, there, there are some people who really like to accessorize their cameras and they, they buy all the, the optional equipment which was available for them. And that's kind of kind of fun, you know, kind of fun to dress up your cameras with it, that, that kind of stuff. But for me, uh, the, the main appeal of the Olympus camera is its compact size, its simplicity, the lightweight, and its quiet operation. 
Uh, between these two cameras, it's really kind of hard to choose which I would prefer. Uh, I love the OM-1 for its just mechanical mechanicalness. Uh, it, it's a very precision machine, like a quality watch or something like that where the OM-2 is actually a better photographic instrument with its more accurate shutter system and better light meter system, and also the fact that it can do uh, through-the-lens metering for a flash. But like the motor drives, I'm not a big fan of uh, flash photography either, even though there are some people out there who who are flash fans and I guess you know, get into photography mainly for you know, the ability to use flash effects. Uh, these were great cameras, and these are the most popular of the classic of the uh, OM series. Uh, these were improved in, into, of course, the OM3 and OM4 models, uh, which I reviewed at other times. At least I've reviewed the OM4 tie. Uh, I haven't reviewed the OM3 yet, but I plan to do that when I happen to get a hold of one, hopefully uh, within a few months. Moving away from the OM single digit series, we'll go ahead and take a look at the OM10 here. And Focus, 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 okay. Uh, the OM-10 was uh, Olympus' first consumer SLR camera designed for the mass market. And what they did is they fitted the Olympus OM mount to a simplified uh, a construction in the body with plastic covers instead of the metal. And <clears throat> despite the fact that it features more plastic in its construction, it did have a more sophisticated shutter management system than the OM-2 camera and that allowed it for, to have even more accuracy. Uh, the wonderful thing about this camera is uh, it's cheap. You can get these for next to nothing nowadays. Uh, you know, you can, and and you, you can get the camera and lens if you shop around for 30 or $40. You, you'll, you'll of course probably have to replace the light seals and do a little bit of cleaning up on, to, on it or in it or with it to get it into good shooting condition. And it might have some issues with the prism or whatever, but uh, you can get a really good camera with the excellent OM mount for a really cheap price. Uh, you can usually get, they usually come fitted with a 50 millimeter f1.8 lens, and the OM10 was a later model camera which usually features the Japan version, which features a higher quality optics. Uh, the 50 millimeter f1.8 lens is probably my favorite lens in the OM mount because uh, it, it just gives you the most bang for the buck. You can get a clean one for $10 or so. And uh, and you, you, that attached to one of these cameras is just a really wonderful uh, picture-taking tool. This particular one is fitted with a manual adapter, which allows you to operate the camera in full manual mode. You set the shutter speed with this dial, and you set the aperture with this, this dial. And to use it manually, you have to set the camera to the manual mode. There's a manual adapter setting here, where I'm pointing at with my finger. For most use, you will set it to the... Uh, of course, manual mode in the center, and then there's a bulb mode at the top. So this camera is capable of doing pretty much everything which the OM-1 and OM-2 can accomplish, but uh, actually more precisely, despite the fact that it has a lower price. And you can, of, of course, fit a power winder to this camera as well. Uh, this one is fitted with the earlier 50mm f1.4 lens, and I like this lens, especially the earlier versions which have the thorium coating on the glass. You can kind of spot those because it has a nice golden color. And I like these lenses because uh, when shooting with a uh, black and white film, it adds some contrast to the images and makes them, I, I think, look sharper and more interesting. And if you're shooting color film, they add some warmth to it, which really enhances, I guess, the film. Uh, the filminess of the images, uh, uh, really great lenses. The most, of course, golden of these lenses is the old 55mm f1.2. And I shot one of those on my OM4 tie for a long time, and I love taking close ups of uh, uh, insects and stuff at the wide aperture. I really loved uh, the effects I was able to get with that lens, and that one was very, very gold colored in, in the front, back, and in the center. Uh, a really wonderful lens. Uh, a friend of mine in Hawaii is uh, shooting with that lens now, and he's uh, really enjoying it. Another cool thing about uh, this camera was uh, the, the OM-10 in double digit series was the improved self-timer system. So in the old days it was quite easy to take a selfie by simply just turning it to the setting and push the button and you'll kind of see it beeping and the light flashing. Uh, much better system than mechanical car, uh, timers which come on the uh, cameras like the OM-1 and OM-2. I'll go ahead and switch it off there. Uh, the plastic series cameras, uh, you know, the OM1020s and such, I, uh, that's probably one of the better features on these. And of course, it was carried on to the uh, OM3 and OM4. 
Those had featured a kind of, rather than the, the, the plastic switch on the top, a button on the side. But you have to be careful when you use that because the plastic lens can pop off and if you lose it, you know, you, you'll never find a replacement. You have to buy another camera to get the replacement lens for it. Uh, yeah, the OM10, uh, of the three cameras I would recommend, I would probably consider these according to uh, your budget. Assume that the OM1 in good condition is going to be more expensive because today uh, it's more collectible and cameras today have, are, are of course increasing in collectivity and, and value. Uh, the OM2 is more reasonable uh, and it looks identical to the OM1, uh, feels the same, sounds the same, works the same. Uh, the OM10 is something if you uh, just want to wet your feet in uh, film photography for jumping into the pool, uh, it allow you to uh, go out and try out film phot photography for a much more reasonable price. And of course, you can always sell it and upgrade to an OM2 or an OM OM1 or uh, you know really up, you know to the to the best of the best, which was the OM3 tie, which uh, one of these days I hope to get another example of. And of course. Uh, Avoid these guys here unless you're looking for something, uh, unless you're looking for an attractive paperweight. And uh, if you come across one of these OM ones, especially one with a low serial number and which is in good condition, uh, a really good investment these are. Uh, anyway, that's it uh, for my review and comparison of these three most popular uh, Olympus uh, film cameras. If you have any comments about them or any questions, feel free to, to leave them in the comment section below. And I'm sure a lot of people would be interested in hearing about people's experiences shooting these cameras. Uh, what you used to use them for when you were shooting and what you thought of them and uh, you know, what you consider the strong and weak points of these cameras. But anyway, uh, it's getting a little bit later and I'd like to get out and ride my bike for a little while before the weather starts to cool down. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon.